A. Tom Thibodeau is out as president and head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Ryan Saunders has been named the interim, interim head coach. Also, reports are surfacing that Fred Hoiberg, the Timberwolves are interested in him in some capacity, but Scott Layden will remain the general manager and Ryan Saunders will step in as the interim head coach. Welcome to the American Express Halftime Report. Chris Miles here with Mike Fratello and Dennis Scott. So looking at the situation in Minnesota, it seems like owner Glenn Taylor wanted to provide an opportunity for Saunders to step in and get a, a coaching job. That's the way it seems. Obviously, when you win a game by 18 or 20 points and you get fired immediately after it, this just wasn't something that was spur of the moment. Right. So this has been talked about. This has been discussed. And for whatever the reasons are, we won't know right now, but eventually we'll come out wh who was unhappy, why they were not satisfied with what was going on. It was a difficult situation because going in, I think Tom Thibodeau knew that changes had to be made, a new culture had to be developed. He got them to the playoffs last year. Yep. Uh, but your two stars were young guys who, based on Jimmy Butler's evaluation of them, didn't understand how hard you have to work to be successful in the NBA and what it takes to make it and win in the playoffs. That caused a split with Jimmy Butler and the young guys. Butler then was moved on. And now who knows what went on behind the scenes with the young guys. Chris, it's been well documented what this team has gone through the last couple of years, making the playoffs the very last game of the season last year. You bring in Jimmy, they're trying to bring in some toughness. They've kind of helped them play a certain way. Remember, we all asked each other, Coach, what took so long for Carl Anthony Towns to sign his extension? Remember, he wasn't signing at first. Yes. So all those things you're saying, what's going on behind closed doors? Is Thibodeau's style of coaching guys hard? long practices. Then you heard he was cutting back on the physical side of practice, but the mental side coach was still a little bit longer than some of the young guys is liking. So all that stuff, now you go back to training camp, then the Jimmy Butler trade, then they were losing, and then to all of our points, wait a minute, last eight games were five and three, they're playing well, and then bam. That's why we're all like shocked at first, but then when you go back and look at the history of what this team has gone through, coach, then you say, okay, now Glenn Turner's probably fed up. Let's look at the staff that they had put together there, okay? With, uh, I, I believe Tom Thibodeau was a person that brought in Scott Layden to the front office. Layden had been uh, from Utah to San Antonio, and then Thibodeau hand-selected him. And Scott you know, Layden, is, he's terrific in the front office. He's a terrific talent evaluator and gets along with everyone. So there shouldn't be any problem there. When you look at the staff, Andy Greer, longtime assistant to Tom Thibodeau, I heard also had been released along with Thibodeau. So now you have Ed Pinckney, Ryan Saunders, and you have Malik Allen, mm -hmm. the remainder of the staff. So Saunders, let's say, moves up as interim head coach. Hopefully, Ed Pinckney, who could be a candidate to be a head coach. Malik Allen, hopefully, are safe for now as they move forward and give Ryan a chance to coach his team. Certainly interesting to see the Timberwolves move on following a win against the Los Angeles Lakers. The Toronto Raptors looking for a victory against the Indiana Pacers. And Kyle Lowry back after missing the last six games. And he's back with a vengeance. Raptors ahead by seven. We'll break that down next on the American Express Halftime. Well, the Toronto Raptors certainly don't look like a team playing the second night of a back-to-back -back czar. They're hot in the first half from three-point range, it's like a role reversal with Indiana. It, it certainly is, because coming in, Indiana was fifth in the league in three-point shooting. Toronto, 26, but not so right now. 10 of 18 in the first half. Six players have made at least one three in that first half, led by Danny Green, who's four of six from the three-point line. It's great when you have your point guard back in that lineup for Kyle Lowry, a guy who's missed the last six games. Like we said, playing the second night of a back-to-back, -back, you get some fresh legs and a guy who's good at distributing. Good at distributing and also showing this year, Coach, he's being a better leader. So when Kawhi Leonard goes out, he knows how to come back in and not force things. A lot of times, as a starter, you want to come back and force a lot of things. Not tonight. A long rebound. You say defense, how do you lose a guy like Kyle Lowry? Coach, you talk about those threes. Those goes one of those threes right there. Sharing the basketball. He's only taking six shots. You would think maybe more shots. Uh, Chris, no. You're in transition. You don't stop the ball. That's transition 101. Stop the ball first. Now you get an old-fashioned and one. Now you're feeling real good about yourself. I've talked about the patience. Look at this half-court set. He's almost at a half-court coach, directing traffic. Tell Big Moose to come get him. Nice screen without fouling. 
perfect bounce pocket pass for the finish. Kyle Lowry coming back, knowing where he's going on the floor, how to make the right passes, showing his leadership. I say it all the time. A lot of time a guy comes back, he tries to overshoot and do too much. He's only taking six shots. Six shots with making sure everyone gets involved. So it looks like Kyle Lowry off to a great start in returning to this lineup after missing the last six games. So Toronto Raptors with the lead over the Indiana Pacers. And if you look at their side, uh, they played well, but it's Toronto making the run. Well, obviously, if you're going to be a, a very, very good team and go deep into the playoffs, you have to be able to defend. And we saw early on in the first quarter, one team shooting 65 percent, the other shooting 62 percent from the floor. Giving up this number of points is not going to get you a whole lot of wins. So I would think there'll be some defensive adjustments made by both teams. And I'm sure that Nick would love to see Toronto come out yes. and continue the hot hand <laughs> exactly. from the three-point line. Exactly. This has been a busy afternoon around the league so far. Game underway. Charlotte and Phoenix. Malik Monk. Ooh, Ooh the lefty. Not just all dunks. Nice finish around the basket. Okay, so Carl Anthony Towns, 28 points in each of his last seven games, but... Breaking news from Minnesota. Tom Thibodeau has been fired as the head coach. This, according wow. to Adrian Wojnarowski and Sean Sharania, both Yahoo and ESPN reporting that Tom Thibodeau is out as the head coach, the Minnesota Timberwolves. And president, too, right? I mean, he was the president, too, coach. So when you get fired, you lose both of those jobs, right? I think you lose both of them. Yeah, I don't think, I'm you're gonna gonna... Get, I think you fire the coach and not fire the president, right? Because yeah. he was the president making the decisions for the coach. Well, that right, could, Tom, for that? That, that could happen. You could fire somebody as a coach and keep him in the front office. Right, okay. Okay, like so uh, Urban Meyer leaves Ohio State, but... He's going to be around. around. Some President and coach, he's out as both. He's out as both. So That's 3D, official. Okay. Ooh. Looking at the situation wow. in Minnesota, why now? Well, I, I guess, you know, Glenn Taylor is the owner. He sat down with his group and said he didn't like the way things were going. The Jimmy Butler situation wasn't great. If you go back and look, and people say the Houston trade was probably better because it was more, you know, picks there. So maybe they sit down and say, let's pull the trigger now before the All-Star break, before the trade deadline. There's more moves to be made, Coach. I look at it as uh, because of their last stretch of eight games, five and three, brings them back into the playoff race. They're two games out of that mm -hmm. eighth spot in the Western Conference. And you just got done saying how great Carl Anthony Towns has been playing. Mm -hmm. Carl Anthony Towns has a direct line to the owner of the team. That's how his contract got done over again. That wasn't a president making that move. That was the owner saying that. So maybe Carl Anthony Towns knows more than we do about what was going on in that situation. Perhaps that's the reason why we see a rejuvenated Carl Anthony Towns over the last eight games. That's just speculation. Well, again, this is reported right now. This is not official from the Minnesota Timberwolves, but if this is the case, you still have a team fighting for a playoff spot. What do they do now? How hard is it to find a head coach in the middle of a season? Well, I doubt that you make a move like that without knowing what direction you're heading in before. Right. Is it someone that's sitting out? And there are a number of of recent head coaches that were fired that are sitting around, okay, that they might mm -hmm. turn to, or mm -hmm. is there somebody within the organization that they have tremendous confidence in, that the players have shown the backing for that person, and that's who you turn to to try and finish out, just like happened as Teron Lou took over in Cleveland mm -hmm. and wound up finishing that season yep. and was given the job full-time after that. Yeah, most cases, Chris, you stay within because one of those, if not all those, assistants collectively can continue to preach the system versus bringing a brand new coach in now and trying to like to your point last eight games you know Catman is rolling so for a brand brand new coach to come in now he has to you know the system what they've been playing to kind of keep things going that way or to your point coach you're going to the top assistant you have in there maybe I think Ed Pinkney I think is our top assistant right now I was right just going to say Ed, he's been Ed, around Ed, a long time Ed and maybe Pinkney, it's an opportunity Ed Pinkney's been around a long time has talked to a number of teams about possibly becoming their head coach mm -hmm. he's been by Thibodeau's side for a long long time and he's kind of been the go between yeah. between players and mm -hmm. coaching staff mm -hmm. Why not give him a chance? If you I, I think he deserves it. In. I think he deserves it. So it's be interesting. So apparently Ryan Saunders is reportedly going to fill in on an interim basis okay. as a coach uh, there in Minnesota. So when you when you hear that name, what's the first thing you think about, Coach? I think of his father, Flip. Yep. Okay. Yep. This, this young man grew up in a basketball household. Yep. Uh, and everyone who has worked with him 
has nothing but really good things to say about uh, Ryan. Yeah, so yeah. if that's the direction they're going in, you know he's going to work. You know he knows the game of basketball. And he obviously must be able to relate to the players because of the positions they've put him in within the organization. So if he's getting that shot, you wish him well, and we'll see the job he can do. Ryan's been around from day one, to your point, Coach, as a kid. The one short year I was there, he's always been one of those kind of kids that's related to the players. He's been with the organization. He knows where all the, as they say, where all the bodies are buried, so to speak. So I think he can fit in right away. And I think Cat and Wiggs and all those young guys are there now. I think they would accept it as well. More on this situation as it progresses. So we wow. see Tom Thibodeau reportedly out as the head coach Oof. there in Minnesota. And also down to three, down to two, it's a three. Good! Good! He got it! James Harden, a flamethrower! Incredible shot! Indeed it was. But check out this incredible quote from Daryl Morey. The Rockets GM says James Harden is the best offensive player of all time. What about Kareem, Michael, Kobe, guys like that? Brendan, is that hyperbole to say that James Harden is the greatest offensive player of all time? I think it would be a better quote if you said he's the best offensive player of maybe this season, or maybe he's the best offensive player of this race, of this time period. But all time, I think it's very hard when you talk about what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was able to do, when you talk about what Michael Jordan was able to do. These guys were, Mike, especially Mike, he had plenty of seasons where he was over 30 points per game, between 30 and 35 points, and shooting incredible percentages along the way. I think from a one-on-one -on -one standpoint, when you look how physical the game was back in the day, Michael Jordan, to me, is still the best individual offensive player of all time. And if you put him in today's game where you couldn't touch him, I think that he would be even better. And it's hard to imagine Mike being even better, but he played through the bad boy Pistons and those Nick teams that were really, really physical. You can't touch people now. He would have lived at the free throw line also, and he would have been able to get his game off in the mid post. I think the most accurate version of that quote may have been, he has been put in position to be the most prolific offensive player in the regular season. And I, I think that's possible. Mm. I think you could argue that. I think there are a lot of different statistical metrics you could use to say he has been put in position to be the most prolific. But to say you're the best offensive player of all time, like you said, if I take Michael Jordan, I put him in this era, and I tell him to do the things that they're asking James Harden to do, it's possible he grows and evolves into doing that at an altogether different level. You just don't know. But I certainly think he's been put in position. He's been really empowered, frankly, to take what used to look like horrifically bad shots. Mike D'Antoni is very comfortable with him taking those shots. And because they're running their entire offense through him, he goes 17, 18 seconds on the shot clock and then goes to a step back three by the numbers, he only has to make a certain number of those to be the most prolific and efficient offensive player. That's fact. It's not a lot of fun to watch. He's whoa, awfully, whoa, awfully. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> oh, let's start Time the debate. Time out, Griff. We are not gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to let you come up here and slander James Harden's No game. slander. No well, slander. Saying it's not fun to watch. James Harden... It, you watched that Golden State game. That wasn't fun to watch. James Harden was hitting crossover, step back. He crossed Clay over, gave him a little slap on the butt, hit the shot on Draymond. He, listen, he's making such great individual moves. I can't say that. I understand he goes to the free throw line a lot. I understand his usage is very high. But guess what? With Chris Paul out, I don't think I want Daniel House creating shots for himself. So I think I, I love what he's doing, and I think it's exciting. So for me, I'm not trying to slander him at all. I, I think what he's done has been mind-numbing. And it, it's a mea culpa on my part for not appreciating him enough before this run. It really is. It's remarkable. I don't like watching someone go dibble, oh, dribble tantrum Ralph. for 18 seconds. I don't. Oh, I like the ball to move. I like the game when it's symmetry in motion. I like it when it's the floor spread and the ball hums around. Now, look. The reality is most of the best players in this league play a very similar, similar way to James. It's just that they don't have the ability to take and make difficult shots like he does, so they have to draw and kick, which then starts the ball moving around. i got a question for you. So I'm, I'm, I'm holding him responsible for the fact that he can actually make shots that other people don't get to take. What does Steph Curry look like if he's not playing with other players who demand the ball and demand movement? Steph Curry can take and make almost all of those same shots. But he's not playing that way. 
and I would rather watch that product personally. And I think that uh, Steph Curry can play a different way and he can play a different style because he gets absolute spacing when you talk about Clay Thompson and when you talk about those other players out there, Kevin Durant, he doesn't have to play that way. James has to play that way. Similar, my question was, when you say you don't like James Harden's style playing that way, it's the exact same style LeBron James had last year when they went to the finals. Right, but Guess he's what? strong and kicking. But, but who else was, was LeBron, was LeBron going to let Jordan Clarkson take him to the playoffs? No, that's a, that is a recipe. Totally get it. That is a recipe for failure. I think that James Harden, he does have high usage, but guess what? I think a lot of guys have high usage in this league, and when you look at Houston's team, especially right now with what they have with Chris Paul being out, I think he has to play like this, and I love seeing it, and it's been successful. We just saw LeBron, we just saw LeBron go to the finals last year basically with him and four rocks start. <laughs> it's a true story. Well, you mentioned that success. It's been 12 games of it, and what a run it's been for James Harden. 40 points a night over Big the game, last James. 12 games. I got you back, James. 40 points in each of the last five games. Listen to the names on that list. Jordan, Kobe, AI. Those are the only other players to do it in the last 50 years. Are they good? Those names sound like good names. I think they're historically good. They're so pretty good. will that streak extend to six games tonight? Brendan. I'm saying yes. I'm going over. I'm going over. I think James is on a run. I think, once again, the usage is high. He's hot right now. He's incredibly confident. And there's not a, really a player on Portland's team that I worry about defensively that can get into James and, fo and force him to do something that he doesn't want to do or make him uncomfortable. So I think James goes over 40 tonight. I'm going to go with the under. And the reason you is... Would, Griff. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 I'm hey. I'm going to go with the under. And the reason is, for me personally, I just look at that list... I look at the names on that list. I look at how many times he's done it, and I'm going to go for regression to the mean. He's due to have a regular superstar kind of night where he gets 34. Okay. Maybe we should save this for later tonight and see who came out on, on top with their prediction. You okay. See, you seen trade, movie Trading Places? <laughs> gentlemen's, one, gen, gentlemen's bet? One One dollar, Winthorpe. <laughs> Placed at 7, 10 p.m. <laughs> Warriors all 